Hey, today you're gonna learn how to transform your ugly React app from this to this. And if you paid attention, the second one is way less ugly. Because we're not using use state, but we're using use reducer. Now the guy that originally came up with this is called Steve. I'll link his YouTube account in the description. And using use reducer allows you a lot of great benefits like handling logic inside of the state update, kind of like middleware. It just looks cleaner if you have a lot of state, you don't need that. You can just use use reducer and your day will be better. I guarantee it. So let's get into how use reducer can improve your React app. It's gonna be really cool. So here we are in a normal React application, not Next.js, just normal React. And uh, to demonstrate what the benefits of user reducer are, the first thing I'm gonna do is construct a really simple example together with you. And for that, in this counter component, we're gonna start working. So if you know state, this is how you normally initialize state. And you just do it the exact same way with use reducer. So there's no difference. You just destructure the counter and set counter is going to be equal to use reducer. Now this reducer is going to take some types because we're working in TypeScript. We want to make everything type safe. That's going to be the reducer type coming up here from React. And that's going to take two generics, a number and another number. Now with that, we can start working on the actual callback function that follows, that takes two arguments. The first one, the callback function, receives the previous, which is of this type right here, of type number, and then the next one, which is also of type number. And then here we can work on the logic, right? You can use these reducers to handle logic before setting the state. And that is the biggest advantage you have. So in the case of the counter, let's say, if the next action that we want to dispatch is uh, smaller than 10, then we want to return next. If you've ever worked with middleware, it's the exact same. We are going to do the next action um, because that's what we named this right here. And if not, we are returning the previous. We're not setting the state. And then as the second argument, we're passing the initial state, which is going to be zero. So the counter is going to be zero by default. And let's return something from this component that is going to be a div with a counter and that counter um, is going to show the counter state that we have and then a button to increase the counter which has an on click handler and that on click handler has a callback function in which we set the counter to counter plus one. Now if we save that and take a look at what that looks like in the browser, we have the button with a, well the button doesn't say anything so we want to say add to counter, uh, restart this, now we have the add to counter button and if we click that we can um, up the counter every time until we reach 9. Because we have this logic check, right? If next is smaller than 10, then we are executing the action. However, if it's not smaller than 10, then we are returning whatever it was previously. And in this case, that's going to be 9. Um, so we're not going past 9, however often we click it. Um, and that's the beauty of the reducer in this case, um, that we can do a really cool logic check before we actually proceed with the action. And there's a very similar example if we use dates. So instead of the counter, we're going to show the date string. The new date is going to be the initial um, state of this reducer. And then we're going to change the next accordingly. This is just, a, just an example date. And then we're going to change these types up here as well. Um, so instead of number, number, we have date, date. And then we're going to show a, um, or set the date to January 25th, um, 2023. Now, and with that logic check in place, if the next action is smaller, so it's before January 20th, this will work. Um, so, because this is after January 20th, this shouldn't work um, according to the logic check, right? So the counter is uh, Monday, January 16th, and if we try add to counter, nothing happens. Um, because we are just returning the previous value, um, because this check right here failed. However, if this was like the um, you know, the 10th of January, this would work just fine. Um, according to the logic check, everything is fine. As you can see, we just changed from the 16th to the 10th. So that is the um, beauty of use reducer for simple use cases. Um, it's very, very convenient. However, there are also more advanced use cases, which I want to get into. We're going to show the same use case, um, or I'm going to show the same use case, uh, once how you normally do it with a normal syntax, and also with Immer, which makes things way easier. Uh, but let me show you the traditional React example first. So we've got a to-do component. And in here, we're going to define our actions first. So we want to change a draft. That means when we type something in, that should be changed. 
we're receiving that here as the um, argument or parameter, then that's going to be the type change draft. That's going to be the type of our action, which gets a payload of new draft, which is the string we receive. And also we want an add to do, which is just add to do. We don't need any additional information because we've got everything we need right here in the draft and just need to know when to add this. That's our actions done. And then we want to type that out because we're working in TypeScript. You don't have to do this if you're working in JavaScript. Um, it just makes things type safe, which is really convenient. And we can infer this as the return type of change draft up here. If we take a look at what that is, that is going to be type change draft and payload new draft string. So exactly what we have up here. Or this is going to be return type of add to do. So this one right here. And as we can see, this is the um, type we get as a result. It's either this one up here or the add to do. And we also want our type state, right? So we can work with that safely. That is going to be a draft string. So whatever we type into the input and also a to do list. Now that to do, each one has an ID and also a text in that to do. Then we want an initial state. That's going to be almost the last TypeScript thing in here, um, which has the draft, which is an empty string, and the to-dos as an empty array. This is how you normally initialize state, right? You just put that in the state um, with your state, and we're doing it up here in a different constant, which also allows us to, um, to define that somewhere in a config and then import it in this file if we wanted to. Now, the reducer function is going to handle all the logic that we're going to define. That's going to receive the state and the action, because remember, that's these two properties are exactly the same as these ones right here. They're just named differently. So this is previous and next, because I think that syntax is easier for these small examples. And um, this one is state and action, but it's exactly the same thing, just named differently. And then in here, we're going to have a switch case. So if the action.type is um, change draft, then we're going to return the previous state that we have, we're spreading it in, and also the new draft as the draft um, item in that object. And then for the case of add to do, everything we want to do is um, push a new object into the state of uh, to do's. And to do that, we're going to set the draft to nothing. So we're going to reset the state. And the to do's is going to be an array. And the first item in that array is going to be an object with an ID and the text that we want to add for our to do. And then the rest of the state that we had previously, we're also spreading in there, um, so we don't lose those. And that is pretty much it. Now we're getting to the reducer in our component. Um, we can, again, destructure these two values just like we would with state. You could call this, um, you know, set to do uh, to do's and set to do's like you do with state by convention. Um, I decided to name them state and dispatch. This is going to be equal to the use reducer. And because we're working in TypeScript, we're going to type this out. It's going to take the state and then the action type that we've um, defined right here. That's why we type this out. It's going to make working in our component way easier. And then also the reducer function and the initial state. That is our reducer done. All the um, logic is handled in this function right here. And then the initial state comes from right here. Uh, essentially the same thing as state, just way more convenient because we can also do um, logic checking in the reducer. Let's have an input where we can input or to do that we want to add. It's going to be of type text with a value of state.draft. So this is going to be a controlled input that we're going to have and an onChange handler where we dispatch the action from the reducer. This would be the equivalent of setting the state, but we're dispatching the action to the reducer right here. So this function is going to handle this and of type change draft. Now change draft also, as you can see up here, expects a payload and as a payload, we're going to pass the e.target.value. So normally with state, you would say set state e.target.value, but we're dispatching this to the um, reducer. Okay, and then the button to add the to do is going to receive an on click handler with a dispatch of add to do. And this doesn't expect any further um, payload because we already know which to do to add, which is the draft, and where to add it to, which is the to dos. And that button is going to say add to do. And then we're going to map over those to-dos to also show them, because right now they wouldn't be shown, just with a div where we go through every to-do item. And let's restart that. And we also need to include that right here. So let's say to-do, import the component into our React app. And that's going to be everything. Just save that. Go back. And now we can say add to-do, like uh, clean the, and I can zoom in so you can see that easier, clean the dishes. 
add to do and that does not work um, because we also need the uh, to do text in there there we go clean the dishes and then we um, you know uh, eat lunch for example and whatever we want we can handle all this in our reducer and the beautiful thing is we can handle all the logic within the reducer instead of having to relying on state and then you know handling the checking in a use effect or something which is not pretty and even react themselves say use reducer is usually preferable to use state when you have complex state logic that involves multiple sub values so essentially um, for example in this counter component whenever you want to handle some logic checking in your state that would be the time to use use reducer instead of use state now let's look at this example right here but in a way simpler fashion and here this is all immutable right that means we cannot change the state it is read only but we can only return something based off of that state and it doesn't look good like the spread syntax and then you know instead of array dot push we have to do this like we have to take an object and then spread the rest of the array in there it's not pretty and there are tools who can help us with that the, so the one the example i'm going to show you right now is going to be the exact same um, example as the to do but with immer um, as you can see here from use immer that is an npm package um, that has like use immer that has like 150,000 downloads per week so it's rather popular and for good reason it is really convenient as you can see here 160,000 downloads um, it also supports state and that stuff so you can mutate state we're going to use it for the reducer and let's get into it the example is going to be the same we have the change draft with a type and the payload of new draft the add to do with which uh, has a type of add to do that's all then we're going to have the initial state with a draft and the empty to do's the type of that which is going to be the same as in the previous example each to do has an id and a text an action which is going to be the return type of both of our action creators up here and then we can work in the component we're going to destructure the state in the dispatch just like we would the state but then we're going to say use immer reducer and that's that's all the difference right and here we say use reducer and then here we're saying use immer reducer which we're importing from use immer and what that allows us to do is then in the reducer which we're going to have in line right here mutate stuff you're going to see that here in a second first we're getting the state and the action as the parameters for our use immer reducer just like we would with the normal reducer where the reducer receives the state and the action we're just destructuring or not destruction we're just um taking those in line right here that's what we're doing right here so this could also be the reducer but we're doing this in line um, so we can have the reducer right here and we're going to have a switch statement again um, differentiating between the action types now first one change draft and this is where immer comes in we're handling the same logic as change draft right here but instead of having to spread in the previous state and then assigning the new draft we can just say state.draft is equal to the new draft so we're mutating the state and that is possible with immer and that's all the logic we can return and then for change draft and that should be add to do by the way not change draft um, we're going to initialize the draft as an empty string and okay i'm going to change that back later um, but then we can literally just push into that array that is the beauty of immer so we're saying that the draft should be nothing um, we can do the same here however um, we are returning an entirely new object whereas here we can literally mutate the state which is really handy and instead of having to do this whole really weird syntax to try to get a new object into an array we can literally just use an array method of push and push that new to do into our array and then return that's all we need to do and then we can render that out in the jsx with our input of type text that is a controlled input so the value is going to be state.draft and the onchange handler is getting the dispatch that we destructured from the um, use immer reducer and that is going to change the draft to the e.target.value so whatever we put in the input field is going to be dispatched to our reducer and then um, set as the draft right here as state.draft is the action.payload.newdraft which is the event.target.value so whatever we type in the input then we're going to have a button with an on-click handler that we're also going to dispatch and well what do we want to dispatch you already know we just want to add the to do that's what we're going to say in the button and that's all we need to do for the um, whole immer thing now this should be 
add underscore to do. There we go. Um, so it's the same as here. It's consistent. We can save that. Go into our index and replace this with with immer with that component we just wrote with immer. Save that. We can get rid of all the unused exports uh, imports with shift alt and o. And then let's go into our local host. It's going to be the exact same thing. And when we click, <laughs> nothing happens because we are not mapping over the to-dos. So we can just take this code right here, paste it in here because we map, want to map over these to-dos. Now this state should be of type state that we defined down there. Uh, there we go. We can also move the types over the state. So that looks a bit cleaner like that. There we go. And now we have the state.todos.map. The todos get inferred correctly. And also we need to move this state.raft is equal to an empty string down here. So be um, so after we push that into the array, because if we do it um, before, uh, you can see what happens. This right here, if we type something, first we're setting the draft to an empty string and then we're pushing the empty string into an array, which doesn't make sense. But if we reset the draft after we've pushed into the array, Save that, then we can say clean the dishes, add to do, um, do the laundry, add to do, and everything works the same. Just with the beautiful addition of Immer, um, making us able to just mutate the state instead of having to do the weird spread syntax, trying to return something in an immutable way. It's just way more convenient um, doing it this way. That's all I want to show you, uh, just a simple example, an advanced example, and also the advanced, advanced example, just done in an easier and more intuitive fashion where we can actually mutate the state directly. That's all I want to show you. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a lot of fun building cool projects with this knowledge. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.